Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. We're still plugging away on our 1976 Dodge D100 pickup. Today we're going to do some uh, electrical work. Little uh, adding a few little doodads and whatnot. First thing we're doing is adding a CB radio. So on to the task at hand. We're just trying to get away with junk that we have in stock because I just, I don't need to be buying or bringing any more stuff into this place. I've got enough crap to get me through all my projects for many years to come. So this antenna, um, I don't know if it was with this truck or I don't know where the hell it came from. Anyway, you can see there, it's just screwed to the, to the oak rack. Apparently that's okay because the antenna, um, the, the coax cable is grounded to the, the ground part of the antenna, whatever that is. And that goes back up and it actually gets chassis grounded at the back of the radio. My understanding of that. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. The radio we're using is this cool, old school Cobra 40 channel. This was actually in the dually when we got it. And it was just too big to, to fit in anywhere in that in that truck with the with the, you know, the modern plastic dash and everything. But I thought, hey, I bet you it'd fit nice in this little Dodge. And it does. It, it It's old school cool, eh? I have to say. Now what we're doing is um, getting the antenna, the antenna hooked up. The, there was a bit of cable in the cab that went up into the roof post and I could never find the other end of it. I, I Lord knows I looked. I had the dome light out. I had the sun visor out. I had everything out, but I could not find the other end of that cable. I tried pulling it and it wouldn't come out. It was getting caught on something in there. So I was able to get, because this cab had been oil sprayed before, the, the there's drillings and plastic plugs all the way up the windshield post. So I was able to, right at the top of the post there, get in there with this really slim knife and cut it. So I've got about six or eight feet of lead coming out of the radio and going down there and there's enough on that antenna to come up in through the floor and we'll make a we'll make a splice down there in the um, down there in the in the rocker panel area and hopefully where I've put the radio shouldn't bother us too much when we put the four speed in it because the shifter comes out of the floor right around here and it, it's up here you know so we should be okay There's our splice. I'm sorry I uh, I forgot to show you how I did it, but it was kind of embarrassing how I did it. Um, I'm not sure if you're supposed to splice this coax or not, but I figured out a way to do it. I think it'll work. Anyway, so that's tucked there in the little channel. They give you a little raceway on each side of the, the rocker panel to run wires, so that's where that is. We'll put our trim piece back on. And then we can start making up the um, the actual connections under the dash to power the radio up. Now we got to get some power to this thing, and I've got a couple other things I got to do. We'll pick up the power. I found a plug up in behind here that that's an ignition feed, so we're going to hook this to that. I can even um, check the color code on it and and look in the wiring diagram and see where it goes to. I might not even need to add an inline fuse if it goes to. Um, you know, the right circuit or whatever. So uh, another thing I want to do while I'm in here, um, my blue dash lights are a major fail. Deb likes the green better and I like the green better. So we're going to swap those over while we're in there. And uh, so I'll see when I got everything apart. So that's looking better. Liking the green a lot more. But what you'll see if you look down there and we can get the headlight switch in the same frame, the problem with LEDs is you can't dim them. They're either on or off. They don't respond to the, the, the rheostat type of dimmer, which is just a variable resistor like incandescent bulbs do. These things need pulse width modulation. That's how you dim an LED. So there's a couple of ways we can do that. This one here is kind of an independent pulse width modulation device. So you would wire that completely independent um, or I guess in parallel with the dash light switch. And so you would turn the that lights on with this 
and this thing's got its own knob with a pot there you'd have to drill a hole mount it and you can adjust it by that this one i found converts dc voltage to pulse width modulation so theoretically this guy should uh go um in series with the with the dash lights and convert the analog signal from this to the pulse width modulation we need for the for the dash lights um, i'm going to set it up and try it before i start hacking wiring up so here's what i've learned about this the one that was um independent like the one that i could control with the with the rheostat on the headlight switch, that one just won't work. The most I could get out of it was five volts and it would barely light the LEDs. So I've switched to the one with the, with the knob, with the pot on it. And you can see here, it actually works. You could dim and brighten the lights. The problem with this is that what I learned is the LEDs have to be completely isolated. Um, I.e. right now, they're all chassis grounded. It, like they're all on a common ground with everything else on the vehicle. And as soon as you put the grounds together, they just go to full bright and they, they won't dim, they won't respond at all. So I have to try and figure out what I have to do with that. Well, some things are made to work out, some things are not. <laughs> For now, I think we're just going to stick the incandescent bulbs back in everything and uh, admit that we're beat. <laughs> just what a bloody thing. It's not so bad to isolate the grounds on the cluster, but all these, um, the, the lights for the switches and that, you can see, see the ones with the orange wires? They're, they've got metal bases and there's just one wire going into them and they're literally just just grounded to the to the framework of the dash and that will that will never work um so what we'll, sorry let me put the flash on so we'll have to get into this somewhere down the road i want to take the whole interior out of this build a whole new dash um maybe at that point we'll have a go at it but for now, um, it's just not worth the aggravation. Stupid me, you know, we're always learning and we learn together. I said to myself, I could, I would hardly turn the headlight switch at all. And the dash lights would go out. And I thought, you know what? I think the, um, the rheostat in this thing is no good. So it's hard to tell here, but you can see there, look, I changed the headlight switch and now we can dim the dash lights with the dimmer switch. It doesn't dim right down to nothing like the, like the, the, um, uh, incandescent bulbs will, uh, I think like they have a range of from zero to 14 volts, right? They're 12 volt bulbs. These LEDs go, I think, from 5 to 12. So you can start turning it down. You'll see it getting dimmer. And then when it gets to a certain point, there's just not enough voltage. And they just shut off. But you know what? That's fine. I can, I can work with that. We'll try it and see how it works. The last thing I have to do is change the one in the radio to a green one. Right now, I got to move a couple of things around on the dash. Um, I found these two holes in here where we're going to put a couple of a couple of toggle switches. Rather than make more holes, let's use the holes we've got. Um, I want to put a brake controller in it just because it's got a trailer hitch. Might as well. Um, I doubt I'll ever tow anything with this. <laughs> I'd need a brake controller. Um, I doubt I'll ever tow anything with it because, you know, Theoretically, I when it it's insured on old car insurance, it's not allowed to tow anything. But I haven't ruled out really. I haven't ruled out really just insuring it as a as a normal vehicle because um, I think this thing is going to be so much fun. I might want to drive it a lot. But anyway, enough of that. 
what we have to do is the brake controller is going to go right here. So I need to get this oil pressure gauge out of here. So what we're going to do is we're going to move that over to the other side of the parking brake uh, assembly here. And the oil pressure gauge is going to sit right here in this corner. And we're going to, to hide it a little bit. We're going to put it in a black bezel. And I've actually, I think I've got a whole black gauge that I can just, I could just swap this out for and it'll kind of disappear in there. And yes, it does seem like I'm hopping around a bit. One minute I'm working on, on this, next minute I'm working on that. I thought you were doing dash lights, now you're doing this. Uh, yes, I hop around a bit. You get doing stuff and you go, oh, I got to deal with that. And then, oh, I got to deal with this. Yeah, that's just how it goes with this sort of work, right? So anyway, let's get this gauge moved. That's something we can do and accomplish. Yeah, that's down there nice. I, I wish I had an, an oil pressure gauge with a with a black bezel, but um, I haven't got one. But that, that's okay. It's down, tucked out of the way. Now we can go ahead, get our, uh, our switches mounted in here, and get the brake controller stuck on the bottom of the dash. I found a couple of um, toggle switches with the uh, illuminated tips. They're not exactly the same, but they're pretty darn close. So we put those in those two holes that were already there. And um, I don't really have anything to hook up to the second one, but uh, we can hook up to the first one. We're going to put some uh, tow lights on the back on the trailer hitch because that's what we do on every truck around here. In the end, those switches I had in here just weren't going to work. Um, I didn't like them, so I just drilled the holes out a little larger and put in these flush mount ones that I had kicking around. Um, I like them more better. They've still got a, they've got a little pilot light on them, so we'll be able to know when they're on. So I've pulled a length of 414 uh, trailer cable up from the back, and we're going to start making some connections here under the hood. Here's our breakers for the RV plug at the back. So I've got them in this. I found this little breaker holder in my junk. These are 25 amp breakers. That's what you want, 25 or 30. Um, one is for the, the charge wire uh, to charge the house battery in your trailer or use for whatever. And the other one is for the electric brakes. Um, this is gonna have a 14 gauge wire going back to the back. So, so 25 amps would be fine. If I had 12 gauge, I'd, I'd look around here for a, for a 30 amp breaker, but, but these will do us. Now we have to mount this on the uh, fender apron somewhere near the, uh, the starter relay so we can run a little jumper over to it. All right, here's our circuit breakers mounted to the, the inner fender. I've got, uh, it, it's fed to this one. I've got a little bus that I made to take it over to that one. And you can see the, the load sides of them are live. Now I've got everything pretty much buttoned up under the hood here now. Now we've got a big mess under the dash to, uh, to tidy up. Here we've got three conductors coming into the cab of the truck. Uh, the black one is the power feed for the brake controller. The blue one is the output of the brake controller. And this yellow one here um, is going to go to the middle terminal, the load terminal of this switch to um, run the hitch lights at the back of the truck. Okay, here we've got, um, this is just inside the back bumper on the bottom of the box on one of the little cross members. I've mounted a junction box. Um, this is our wire coming from the front. This is the wire going down to our seven pole plug here. And I've got the, this is the original wire. There's probably a T connector in the harness somewhere that was feeding uh, lights and stuff to the, to the trailer plug. So we've got that going in here to feed the light part of this, whereas the brakes and the auxiliary power comes from the front through this. Also, I've got this wire. It's a yellow wire, um, which we commonly use for backup lights. Uh, we use for backup lights on the trailer. And we will be doing the same, but controlling them by a switch, not letting the, the reverse light switch in the truck control them. And we've got these. I put a couple of um, hitch lights under the back bumper, just the old groaty 
uh, uh, rubber ones, which were really popular back on older trucks. So we just got to make our final connections and then we can start testing out some of the stuff back here. I finished making all my connections in the uh, uh, junction box under the uh, behind the bumper here. And I haven't got the connections at the front done yet, but I just um, hooked up these lights uh, with a jumper wire inside the box just to make sure, number one, that the bulbs are good, and number two, that the grounds are good. So uh, that's that. Perfect. Got the brake controller hung under the dash, and I've got the, the blue wire out to the brakes hooked up, and the black wire, which is power in. Two wires left are the white and the red. So the white one is ground, so we could just uh, put a terminal on it and run it to any ground screw like, like that one there. And then the red one goes to the, uh, up here, the out, the outside of the, of the brake light switch. So we'll check it with the light. Uh, one of these terminals will be hot all the time and the other one will be hot when the, when the brake is depressed and that's what this red wire will attach to. So here's our brake light switch and you can see that guy there is hot. So the, that outer one is hot and then that one there, when you push the brake pedal, so that's the one we want to hook the red wire from the brake controller to. Okay, got that done. Now if I step on the brake, there you'll see there that one little LED light up on there. That's telling us that we're good to go. It won't do much because there's not a trailer hooked up. But anyway, that's that. Now here is our switch for our hitch lights. See the little pilot light is on. Let's make sure they came on. Yep, hitch lights are on. Now we got our trailer testers in. We could use my little box too, but these happen to be handy. And we're gonna test our uh, our trailer plug. So right now, all that we've got here is the auxiliary feed. Now I'm gonna flick on the hitch lights and the, um, the this one here, backup, should light up on this one. So far, so good. Now we'll uh, put the parking lights on. Good there, good there. Now we'll try the left signal. Left, blinking. But not blinking here. Hmm, very interesting. Okay, let me try the right. Yep, blinking there, but not blinking here. Let me get the other tester. Yep, right's blinking on this one. Let me try the left. And that's good too. I guess that other tester is no good. Now that I got all that done, I could put the dash back together. All right. It's dark, let's see what it looks like. So there's our dash lights. And we can dim them down a bit, you see. They don't go right down, but that's not too bad. Um, now we're gonna check the, the turn signal indicators. Yeah, they're working. And the high beam. Yep, yeah, it's working. Now we'll put the ignition on and we should see the oil light. Yep, and let's check, make sure the brake light works. Yep. Good. Now, uh, let's see what the CB looks like when it lights up. Yeah. It's got a dimmer too, I thought, but... Yeah, there it is. Oh, sorry, I'm not even... There. Although, it should have a light in there in the SWR dial. I think there should be some more lights in there, but... You know what, it doesn't matter. I can see what channel it's on. That's the main thing. I'm not going to push my luck. Does this radio even work? Oh, yeah.
Good. So that's that. A great success. Here's the next thing I got to deal with, screwing around with lights and such. Um, this little piece of this light here, you can see it's it's come off of there. Um, so I got to take the lens off and hopefully I can get this stuck back on there. Uh, which the old Gorilla Super Glue. Well, we're just going to let that set up for a spell now. I found a few other super glue repairs in here, so I guess um, this light's been busted before. Probably the best thing to do is I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for them uh, coming on sale, or, or I might just go up to up to the uh, auto parts place in town and get some real, like, grody ones because the the ones um, that you can get at the, the cheaper places, well, they're going to be, you know, cheap lights. <laughs> I don't even know what's the right lights for this. This is a 76. It should probably have the little round ones. I'm guessing a 76 should have the little, the little round lights with separate backup lights um, that would have been mounted on the back of the box here. That kind of, if memory serves me, is how these things would have been. These are like uh, 78, 79 lights. I guess it would have been popular for people to upgrade to these, but who knows. Now we're going to see about changing this here steering wheel to something a little more sporty. This one um, is a little one out of a, I don't know, it's out of a, a Dodge Dart SE or something. It's kind of a fancy wheel, but we want something uh, a little sporty in here. So let's, let's see what we can do. I'll be back in a minute. We're going to be installing this uh, e-body steering wheel. I'm not sure what year these were from, but, but they're uh, kind of a base steering wheel, I think, in the Barracudas and Challengers for a couple of years. Um, in order to install this in anything but an e-body, you need the short adapter. Uh, so that would be a, a B-body or A-body tough wheel adapter because the e-body adapter was about eight inches long and that won't work on a pickup truck. So lucky for us, um, Nick at the Real Guy Garage sent us along this ratty old tough wheel, but it's got the horn button and the horn contact and the, the A and B body or truck tough wheel adapter. So that's what we use to put this together. In future, we may have a go at fixing up this tough wheel. It's pretty ratty, but um, th there are ways to fix them. The, the foam at least is not loose on the core. So you may be able to um, patch this up a little bit and put a steering wheel cover on it or something. Um, that's a job for another day. For now, we're putting the Challenger wheel on. I like these. I've had them in all my trucks at some point or another over the years. So uh, we'll go with that. So we got the nut off. Got the steering wheel puller on now. Hopefully it'll pull this thing off rather than pull the bolts out of the steering wheel. Uh, looks like we're in good shape here. Yeah, off it comes. Super. I'll we'll have a look in here and make sure everything looks okay. Give it some service. There, it's serviced. Okay. So now what we got to do is get our tough wheel adapter. Uh, make sure it's going to be compatible with this. It should be. Um, because we need our horn to work. Yeah, okay. So you can see it on the back of it. Same sort of horn ring. There's the, the little thing for canceling the turn signal. So this should be a-okay. Um, one of this things got a dummy spline in it. Hmm. Well, the old one was on something like that. Yeah, there's got to be a dummy spline. Okay, let me figure this out and I'll be right back. All right, took a little persuasion, but we got it on. We're going to get this thing all cleaned up and refinished when we, we're going to redo the whole interior in this truck at some point. So for now, we're just getting this stuff kind of all together and making sure it, it, it works. Um, what we could do now, I guess, is test the horn contact. Let's see what happens. For some reason, you have to have ignition on in this one. Good. So, so far, we know that's working. 
We'll find out once we get the steering wheel on and the and the contactor and everything on. We'll try it again. Yeah, that looks a lot better. I had that same steering wheel in my old brown three-quarter ton. I had one in my Ram Charger. I even had one on my very first Ferguson tractor. You used to get these things at the swap meet for like five bucks. <laughs> Nobody wanted them. Um, I think I got this one for ten bucks at at Mopar Fest in New Hamburg a few years ago. Yeah, that's awesome. Love these wheels. That looks so good. Well, it's got that Hurst shifter sticking out over here. It's going to be even, even gooder. Oh, yeah, this is really coming together nice. Very, very happy. Huh, well, I guess that'll do it for this one. Uh, a lot of electrical mumbo jumbo. But oh, we got lots done. And uh, we're, we're moving right along with this. In the next video, I've got just a few little um, odds and sods we got to do. It. First thing we got to deal with is that wheel cylinder back there that's leaking. I don't know why it's leaking. I want to get the carburetor changed and see if we can get it running a little bit better. And uh, see what else we can find to do. And then I've still got the exhaust system to do and the front end to do. And then a big, major clean up because this thing is an absolute mess anyway i'd like to thank you for tuning in hope you'll come back and see us again continue to support our little channel here in our corner of the universe and until we meet again i'm kevin saying so long for now from the claremont classic garage